good morning friends i am dr narayan gusal urologist i am currently practicing in uh, kathmandu nepal and i would like to share my experience with you regarding a uh, percutaneous nephrolithotomy pcnl and uh, in this short video i would like to uh, share with you with uh, different uh, approaches of uh, kidney from upper calyx uh, mid calyx and lower calyx as well as uh, i would like to talk about a bilateral pcnl how i do my bilateral pcnl and uh, a different uh, instrument i have been using standard pcnl and mini pcnl as well as a super mini pcnl because uh, it's uh, pcnl is a very uh, 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 complex topic and there are lots of uh, different advancement in the technology and uh, also we have also the understanding of uh, kidney anatomy and uh, variable approach uh, its approach has uh, their pros and cons so i want to explain here because i have tried all these uh, approaches uh, in the different time and all kind of uh, scopes standard pcnl mini and super mini i haven't used a micro pcnl but uh, this standard mini and super mini i am still using it so i want to share with my experience how i choose my instrument and how i choose my approach and th there is also now um, uh, latest uh, we are also using a, a supine pcnl and uh, uh, before, because before we we have been doing a, a pcnl in a prone position so i have also started doing a supine pcnl also but i have a very uh, I, in any case uh, i don't really make mind beforehand first i saw the patients and uh, i saw the i scan and after then i only make my decisions based on all those uh, findings because every kidney is different and every anatomy is different there is no such a things like hard and fast rule you have to go from this side and you have to approach this way because all approaches are acceptable as long as you know what you are doing so i want to first i used to uh, do a standard pcnl in when i was training we used to do a 26 frames scope and we used to do a 28 or 30 frames of seat uh, eventually that uh, now i my standard pcnl is i usually do uh, 21 frames of scope and 24 frames of seat okay that's my standard now i'm practice and my pcnl uh, mini pcnl my scope is uh, i think uh, it's around 12 and uh, 10, 10 to 11 and uh, uh, the seat i use is uh, like uh, 18 sometimes sometimes 16 and even uh, 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 18 16 14 even up to 14 and in super mini uh, we have a uh, super mini the systems uh, allow you to do uh, up to 14 and uh, 12 okay and uh, for the standard and mini we can use a pneumatic lifter and uh, also laser but a uh, super mini uh, it's still advised to use a laser because uh, it's a very small scope and uh, laser is appropriate for that for the puncturing technique uh, my in favorite puncture is always a superior pole puncture and i will tell you why i uh, prefer superior pole puncture and what are the advantages and disadvantages of the superior pole puncture what i encountered because if let's see this is the kidney and we have here superior pole let's suppose this is the posterior calyx superior pole and this is the anterior calyx okay we can go posterior calyx and anterior calyx as well as okay but uh, i usually what i do is uh, after catheterization after, this is the prone position mostly i i want to do a superior pole puncture always in my prone position i don't do in supine position superior pole puncture and prone position uh, after putting a catheter or ureteric open catheter uh, we position the patient in the prone and uh, i inject the contrast okay and little bit of 5 cc of uh, air i also inject here and not much air but very little air sometimes and what happens is once you inject the air the air will go in the most uh, 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 upper part okay so you can uh, and differentiate which one is the posterior and which is anterior by that ear by looking at the ear because the ear the in, in the ct scan uh, in the in the uh, fluoro you, you you will see here in the like a little bit of whitest okay white and uh, discolorations unlike the uh, contrast which is the uh, dark so uh, that's that's you know that that's the superior pole 
uh, calyx. Okay, so it's very straightforward puncture. And the, the problem here in occipital pole is always this uh, 12 ribs because the 12 ribs always in in between you and uh, 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 your uh, calyces. Okay, sometimes the the 12 ribs always exactly in the same plane. Sometimes the the calyces are a little bit higher. Sometimes the calyces are a little lower. Okay, so sometimes you have to little bit ask your anesthetologist to uh, hold the breath. Okay, and also sometimes uh, give the expiration or inspiration. So so that and what my in this kind of cases when there is always uh, drips in front of you, I don't want to go below. Okay, I I want to puncture from above as much as possible. So I want my my put up punctures above the ribs. Because you know, in, in below the ribs there are lots of blood vessels and there is chance of injury when you are dilating, okay. And so when I do a, a puncture here, I, I I I try to puncture above the ribs in the posterior superior callus, okay. And it's always a bullseye technique because this is very precise bullseye technique and is easy to learn, very easy to learn bullseye technique. So what I do is uh, 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 I make a zero degree fluoro. And I put my uh, uh, point with the needle. I I, I grasp my I grasp my um, uh, the needle with my um, what you call uh, my my punctured needle with my uh, needle holder. Okay, so that I I I will not expose my hands to the radiations. So by this doing this way, I I put my puncture just exactly where there is a little bit of ear which I injected here. Okay, just a five cc ear. I can see there here, and it's a very straight forward. So when I'm making a uh, in fluoro, I should not see this length of the um, what you call this um, puncture needle. I should see only the top part only, so that it means it's a bull's eye technique. So straight forward, I I go inside like a, like a, I approximate beforehand how many how what's the patient bull up by by looking the CT scan of the. Uh, patients ahead and I go inside and after doing that one after doing I, I, I insert uh, I turn my fluoro to 0 degree uh, sorry 30 degree by looking 30 degree you exactly know if you are in the calyces you are in the deep or you are in superficials if I am superficial I'll go little inside if I am deep I'll just pull up my little bit pull up my uh, pull up my needles by doing so that it's so reproducible that usually you can even get uh, access even just one one puncture. You don't really need to multiple puncture because this is very predictable way of puncturing uh, the kidney. And after then, what I do is I put my guide wire all the way. Uh, I try to put as much as possible. I try to put my guide wire all the way directly up to the bladder. My guide wire should go up to the bladder. And sometimes I uh, I change. I put the uh, different dilator here, uh, the the serial coaxial serial dilators, and I, I I sometimes I change my thermo guide wire to like super stiff or maybe a, a zebra guide wire, which is little bit stiffer. And then uh, along with that guide wire, I put my uh, coaxial sheath. Okay, the coaxial sheath is just like your just like a ureter catheter, uh, Prince eight, and it goes all the way up to distal ureter. And then I have a very nice stiff uh, pathway and I can dilate up to what whatever I want okay up to here up to up to here up to here whatever if the stone is here I will only dilate up to here if the stone is here I will dilate up to here so I'll go my I will you know, plus my dilator serial dilators uh, okay step by step and then I put my M plus okay and uh, after doing this one it's so easy uh, we can really do up to proximal third here up to the dist, uh, like lower calcium stones easily I can go each each of the uh, you know uh, different uh, calluses here if it's uh, even inferior pole okay and up to I can also go up to the middle calcium here up to sometimes up to here but uh, I cannot go here this is the only problem if you are approaching from the uh, this one and might sometimes this might also can be a problematic if you are dealing with the uh, upper pole across okay so uh, we, this is because too much torque here I cannot reach here but up to here this middle pole and up to here this inferior pole up to here all this up to so nicely I can remove all the stones okay this is very fantastic way of doing PC handles so that's what I do it and usually I left my nephrostomy tube here because I am I'm concerned here because mostly I might uh, puncture the pleura so if I leave it 
without nephrostomy tube and if there is a let's suppose uh, like bad luck or something there is a strain stress or sometimes the ureter cath the digestion did not really properly position there might be block and uh, if that case if i did not look, uh, leave the uh, ureter cath i mean uh, i mean nephrostomy tube I might have some more problem. The patient might have more pain. Sometimes may have some pulmonary effusions, you know, and uh, there is uh, some kind of like fever, persistence of fever. So it's better always to put a nephrostomy tube when I'm doing the super bowl punctures. Okay. But uh, sometimes I also do mid uh, inferior pole puncture, but uh, I only choose my inferior pole puncture when I'm doing my super mini PCNL. Because in this super mini PCNL, my concern is, let's suppose if there is a stone here, only this part, I go up to here, I dilate up to here, I use my laser, because so using the laser, there is no retropulsion of the uh, stones, okay? Otherwise, uh, if I use my mini PCNL and I use my like a pump, you know, the, 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 to have the, you know, effect to bring the stone down, uh, uh, evacuate the stones, the, the tendency is this stone might uh, migrate all the way up to here or sometimes it migrate up to here, sometimes it migrate up to here, sometimes most of the time they also migrate up here because we are using the water force in the mini PCNL. So by doing that, it's very difficult if the still migrate here, I have to put another puncture here because I cannot reach from here all the way here, it's sometimes difficult. Sometimes doing the stone goes here and I, ha I, I have to put too much torque here, it's very much difficult to do that. Uh, so that inferior pole, I use my super mini PCNL up to the only stone and use my laser so that I don't have to, I don't have to, uh, uh, I don't have to, uh, and, and there is a less chance of stone migrations. So when I'm using a inferior pole, I always use super mini uh, techno, technique because it's very nice because it has it's also suction effect and it, it always is laser and there is no really a no chance of stone migration because there is no uh, uh, like uh, the fluid will just push back because there is a suction also mechanism together with this and also sometimes i also use a uh, mid pole puncture mid pole puncture is uh, also a very effective way of doing a, a puncture just like a superior pole it has advantage is uh, you don't have to go all the way up to the kid uh, up to the kidney you know, because uh, the, the, there is a less chances of having a pillar or pillar or complications because here what i do is just i look for the tip of the 12 okay then in between the 11 and 12 mostly tip of the 12 i insert my needle and thus which is the superior the most superficial calyx i puncture there okay and in i, I puncture this one in my zero degree okay also and I, 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 if there is no fluid come, sometimes uh, I can make the 30 degree and see if I am the deep or if I am superficial. And by look, looking the 30 degree, I can really, I know if I am superficial or deep. So I will adjust accordingly. It is easy to do it. And, but this technique, I always use mini PCNL. Why mini PCNL? Because uh, mostly uh, if you use uh, like a, a super mini PCNL, the problem with super mini is uh, you, there is no access sheet. Okay, there is no uh, emplacid, sorry, emplacid there. So you have only one scope and it, the emplacid is, uh, I mean, there is no emplacid. So if you want to maneuver the scope is difficult. And since the scope is very friable, you might break the stone, I mean scope. So when you are using super mini, you should be very straightforward to the stone and just fragment it, just leave it. That's all. You cannot really try to manipulate around and go this kidneys, the kidney, kidneys, you know, they're too much different angulation because there is no access sheet. So if you have access sheet, you have more leverage to uh, move the scope. Okay. So in super mini, I found that if there is a stone here, you can just go there, you can dust the laser, uh, the, the job was finished. But if the, you want to go this calis, but if you want to go upper calis, if you want to go here, if you want to maneuver inside, there is less maneuverability in super mini PCNL. Unlike mini PCNL, we have a much more mini uh, leverage in maneuvering like here. Sometimes when we approach from here, we can go all the way up to the inferior pole and uh, you can remove the stones. Also easily you can approach this uh, pelvis, okay, uh, uh, pelvis and the proximal ureter. And also you can sometimes go up to the upper ureter. So this uh, for the middle pole, mini PCNL is a very effective way of doing a PCNL also, okay. So, how I do my bilateral PCNL? Okay, I, I have been doing my bilateral PCNL uh, since uh, five or six days, uh, six years, and uh, it is very possible to do a bilateral PCNL from one side. 
okay let's suppose i'm doing a bilateral pcnl from right side what i do is uh, my prefer approach for bilateral pcnl is always the upper pole because let's suppose i'm i always do my bilateral pcnl from the same side i don't change the position because you know changing position everything is takes so hard all so what i do is i approach upper pole and also uh, contralateral side also i approach upper pole okay so let's suppose wh what i do is firstly i do upper pole approach of this kidney let's suppose i'm doing bilateral and i start from the right side i do upper pole approach from kidney and if my uh, surgery is uh, you know finished within a time there is no blood loss and there's an uneventful course then i proceed to the bilateral side otherwise if there is some problem i don't do the bilateral and another thing is if i have uh, i have to approach the contralateral kidney inferior pole or mean pole what i do is i do that side first i do that side mid pole or contralateral pole uh, first then only i do the later the upper pole approach in the contralateral kidney okay so what i mean is let's suppose i have a stone here and i want to approach mid pole and another kidney has a stone in upper pole i want to approach right side first okay and from same side I want to approach the upper pole approach in the left kidney. That's how I choose my uh, PCNL. Okay, and uh, I think in the super mini and mini PCNL, I don't place nephrostomy tube, but in the standard PCNL, especially upper pole, I always leave a tube here. If you have any questions, uh, I will. I am very happy to share with you. Any uh, thank you.